Good evening, Mr. Bond fans, and welcome once again to the Ranking to End All Rankings, a video where I am going to be, well, ranking each of the cinematic actors who have played James Bond. And quite honestly, this is a video that I've been daunting for quite some time. I mean, when you're as deep into the Bond fandom as so many of us are, it feels dirty to have to choose between all these different guys who've played James Bond. It's like having a bunch of cool uncles that you like for different reasons. One's better at telling jokes, one's always ready for an adventure, one's always crying. You know, it's just like real life. This is actually going to be the first of three videos videos that I'm going to be making on the subject of ranking bonds because quite honestly there's so much different criteria involved in this that I'm splitting this into three categories. My own personal totally subjective opinion, who is the truest bond to the Ian Fleming creation, and who's best if I put on my totally objective hat. This video is going to be tackling the first of those, and this is all about my personal favourites. So prepare for many a biased and completely individual opinion. I'll be giving an overview of each actor's work on the series, as well as pointing out films where I think they give their best performance. Where applicable, obviously. Spoilers for Lazenby. His best Bond performance was in Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Now, I'm of the opinion that the Bond fandom is the best fandom out there. And from interactions that I've had and seen on here and on other social media platforms, I think we're generally a civil bunch who are open to contrary opinions, and I want to stress that going into this. These are just my opinions. Please do let me know your own ranking in the comment section below, but there's no need to throw your third nipple out of the pram if your favourite isn't the top of my own list. But like I say, I think that Bond fans are generally a really good bunch, and it certainly won't come to anything like that. Not like uh, a few years ago when civil war broke out amongst the fandom. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I was... Part of a battalion of Pierce Brosnan fans, we just the previous day claimed the entrance to Bywood Studios from a Lazenby group. They'd put up a good fight, but they were they were no match for us, and today we were pushing forward. We were going to attempt to claim the 007 stage. We were on our way to the rendezvous point to meet with another battalion of Brosnan fans when we were ambushed by a by a splinter cell of Timothy Dalton fans. They took us prisoner of war, but my god, they treated us like vermin. Thirty-five of us were captured, and by the end of the war. Only twelve of us were left. Those that didn't survive, by God. They'd made puddles of strawberry jam out of them. But we're all friends now, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Number seven. Yes, as this is a list of all the cinematic bonds, I would be remiss to not count David Niven from 1967's Casino Royale spoof. I'm specifically only touching on cinematic bonds, though, because, you know, if I bring in Barry Nelson's TV portrayal, then you could extend this to, you know, people who've played Bond in radio dramas and video games and so on. And the author Mark Edlitz touches on this in his Bond work. There's that great Pierce Brosnan quote about more men have walked on the moon than have played James Bond, but really, it's only true to cinema. Bond has certainly been portrayed in other forms of media by people who are often not talked about, and I honour those people here by really not talking about them any more than this, but for the sake of brevity, I'm only sticking to cinematic portrayals here. David Niven is really interesting though, as had he been cast as Bond maybe ten years prior and played it in a in a straight film, I think he'd have been great. Niven's a terrific actor, obviously, and Fleming even liked the idea of him as Bond, but he certainly got the short shrift when it came to playing Bond as he only did it in the 60s spoof film. Now, Niven's one of the very best things in that film by a mile, but he's not really playing Bond as we know him, which is a shame. He's obviously playing it for laughs, and his version of Bond is supposed to be the antithesis of Connery's, and that's the gag. So while Niven gives a consistently entertaining performance, he's certainly my least favourite portrayal of Bond in cinema, but that's pretty much by default. This isn't really a comment on Niven as an actor. I think he's terrific. I've seen him in many other things, but as Bond in Casino Royale 1967, nah, not so so much. I'm sorry, old man, but, but what you ask is quite impossible. Number six. This never happened to the other fellow. It's great that On Her Majesty's Secret Service has been undergoing something of a renaissance for a while now. Often the overlooked Bond adventure and pretty much a rogue outlier for so long, it's properly recognised now as one of the most mature and emotionally powerful entries in the series. Is anything the matter, Sir Just a slight stiffness coming on. 
Yes, I said mature, but as such, George Lazenby's single performance as Bond has undergone something of a re-evaluation. I've seen plenty of comments from people who laud his performance and rank him quite highly, and I can totally see where those observations come from. But personally, I've just never really connected with his performance like I have a good deal of the other Bonds. And I feel like, similar to Niven, it's kind of harsh to even judge him alongside the others as he only really had one film, and a good deal of the stuff that he had to do was against what we typically think of Bond to be. He spends a good chunk of the film undercover as Sir Hilary Bray, and given that Lazenby wasn't really an actor and this was his first film, I don't think that he has the nuanced skill to pull off such a performance. And by that, I mean that I never feel like I'm watching James Bond undercover. I feel like I'm watching George Lazenby playing a different character, and it doesn't help, of course, that Lazenby's voice was dubbed for the scenes where he plays Sir Hilary, so there's a further disconnect with this performance there, but overall, the word that springs to mind whenever I think of Lazenby as Bond is just, well, wooden. And I know that's something of a controversial label. Some people don't find him wooden at all, but every time someone tells me that Lazenby isn't wooden, they might as well be telling me that grass is purple. I just don't see it, and there are times I feel like I'm Winston Smith in the torture scene from 1984. Tell me, what kind of performance am I holding up? A wooden one. And if the party says it is not wooden, it is great. What kind of performance is it? However, I do feel like there are definitely scenes where Lazenby excels, particularly when he's with Diana Rigg. Now, it's tough when you pair up someone so inexperienced with someone as effortlessly talented in the field of acting as Diana Rigg was, but for whatever reason, I think these two work together really well, and it's one of the most important Bond-Bond-girl relationships in the series, and I also think Lazenby completely nails the final scene. For someone who'd never acted in a film before, he performs that last scene so tenderly and with great sympathy. I think he's really great in those those emotional moments. Like I say, there's no cinematic actor that I dislike, so the fact that Lazenby ranks at the bottom of my preferences isn't to say that I don't like his portrayal. I wouldn't want Honor Majesty's Secret Service without him, quite frankly, but someone has to come at the bottom of the official bunch, at least, and for me, that's Lazenby. Sorry, ma'am. Number five. I got the message. Timothy Dalton is the Bond actor that I feel like I've been on the biggest journey with personally. There was a time when I would have outright said that I completely disliked his version of James Bond. So you're going to hear an awful lot of Timothy Dalton bashing when we got into his films in the series. I just think he makes for a James Bond. But I've certainly matured since those carefree, provocative days, and Licence to Kill is undoubtedly the Bond film that I've turned around on the most, and I think Dalton is actually quite terrific in that film, and that's in large part down to the fact that the movie feels designed to showcase his, at the time, new take on the character. He totally suits the film and tone, and he fits in really well. Funnily enough, there's actually a deleted scene from that film that I just adore, and I think it's a real shame that it wasn't kept in the film, because it's just, it's just him as Bond prepping with the TV on in the background, he's smoking a cigarette, he just oozes Bond in that scene. He's really terrific in that film. License to Kill is his best performance as Bond by a mile, I think. The thing that lets Dalton down for me is the living daylights, really, and I feel bad because I think that some of this is kind of out of Dalton's control. I mean, he was drafted in pretty late into the game once Pierce Brosnan couldn't do the role due to his TV contract. Hello, I'm speaking with Mr. Dalton. Oh, hello. Yes, well, it's good news. You've got the James Bond part. Yes, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? Congratulations. Well, we start filming in 20 minutes. Can you be here in 10? And as a result of that, the Bond of the Living Daylights does not feel tailored to Dalton's very specific abilities. And by that point, Roger Moore had defined the character for over a decade, so I guess they felt like they needed to keep in some of the gags and some of the one-liners, but Dalton just can't do that as well as some of his some of his peers, and so many moments end up feeling a bit cringy for me as a result. And a big part of this is because they were in a deadline. They didn't have time to wait. They had to just write a generic Bond character, and uh, please show up tomorrow on time, Mr. Dalton. Let's go, we have a release date to meet. Maybe Dalton would have ranked higher if he'd have actually gotten that third or fourth film and he'd been able to continue on his interpretation of the character. So while one of those portrayals that we have from him really gels with me an awful lot, the other, not so much, which is why he ranks five on my list. I hope the Dalton fans out there can forgive me and please don't take me prisoner again. I, I, I think I've come quite a long way when it comes to appreciating his portrayal of James Bond. In fact, I can't even think of Breakfast Preserves without thinking of his very particular delivery of... Plenty of time for a sniper to make strawberry jam of him. Good morning, Calvin. How are you? Hey, that's a mighty fine-looking breakfast you got there. What are you eating? Oh, why, thank you. Well, you know, I'm just having some toast and butter and... Strawberry jam!
Number four. Well, everybody needs a hobby. So what's yours? Resurrection. Okay, so now we're into the really tricky territory for me, because while I like all of the Bond actors in their own ways, I really like them from this point on, starting with Daniel Craig, who takes the number four spot on this list. The most current Bond's version of the character has been lauded as the more successful, darker, grittier take when compared with Dalton's version of the character, and maybe that style is destined to only work so well for me. Personally, I think Craig is a terrific actor, and his tenure as Bond has defined a massive chunk of the series' history. I mean, in terms of years occupying the role, from Casino Royale to No Time to Die, he's had more time than any of his predecessors in the part. Of course, his era has been somewhat defined by heightened emotional storytelling in all his films, and it's a step away from the preceding 20 movies. His films have become much more interconnecting. I mean, you could drop a complete newbie into Octopussy and it could be enjoyed as a completely standalone adventure, whereas try watching Quantum of Solace without seeing Casino Royale. I mean, that film's hard to follow at the best of times. And obviously, that different kind of storytelling has has affected the character that we see on screen, and Craig to some extent has been a key creative voice behind the scenes influencing some of these choices. He's credited as a co-producer on these things now, so he clearly has more of an impact on the creative choices than I'd say any other Bond before him. Some of these are great, some not so much, but I will say that Craig himself and his portrayal as Bond is a solid constant, whether I like the individual films themselves or not, and I have enjoyed seeing his Bond persona evolve over the years, maturing into the role just as the character himself has been maturing over the films. There are moments every now and then, mostly Inspector, where I feel his portrayal is quite out of whack with what Bond is. I mean, the moment specifically Inspector where he has his outburst while Blofeld is playing the video of Madeline's dad killing himself always rings really false to me, but his Casino Royale performance is perfectly pitched and the more emotional moments work terrifically in that context. So I love Craig an awful lot and I think he was just the right shake-up the franchise needed at just the right point. In terms of the film in which I think he gives his best performance, I kind of love Casino Royale and Skyfall for him for two different reasons. The latter is a great Bond performance, whereas Casino Royale is a lot less traditional Bond, but it's that's the whole point. It's by design, and Craig is sensational in that film, but ultimately I just delight in him more in Skyfall, so I'm going to have to go with that one out of the two. Yeah, I know, Calvin praising Skyfall to the high heavens. What next? Golden I love? <laughs> uh, well, yes, obviously, but uh, uh, but first, number three. So, earlier on when I said about this list being entirely personal, please do keep that in mind when I say that my third choice for this ranking is Sean Connery. Well, you can't win them all. Yeah, the one who probably more consistently ranks as the general number one than any other actor in the series is my third favourite Bond, not because I dislike anything he does, but I just prefer a couple of the other guys. At Connery's legacy as Bond will be treasured and appreciated for so long as human beings produce and appreciate narrative entertainment. There's no doubt about that, and with very good reason. He was a phenomenal performer. He defined the role, of course, by being the first of the cinematic Bonds and laid the groundwork for all to follow. He's so effortless in the part, and he can do the humour, the action, the womanising, he can put on this helmet and fly this goofy looking jetpack without looking like a complete idiot. He could wear dungarees at 50 odd and still be the coolest person in the room, and honestly cool is just the best word to use when talking about Connery. I don't know if there's been a cooler person in terms of just, I mean, you could drop this man into almost any film, any scenario, and he'll still be a badass no matter what you ask him to do. The thing holding him back for me personally though is that I feel like despite him playing Bond seven times, there are only really two of his performances that I absolutely adore from Rush With Love and Goldfinger. In Doctor No, they were obviously still figuring out the screen character. Thunderball is the beginning of him looking bored through the whole thing, and You Only Live Twice, he's just so over Bond that there are scenes where he looks so zoned out and fairly convinced he's just replaying his latest round of golf in his head. I really should have used a six iron on that 14th fairway. Oh well, always next time. Diamonds Are Forever and Never Say Never Again recaptures some of the magic, but not to the heights of his second and third outings in the role. Despite that, he is eminently fun to watch in all of his films, and in Goldfinger in particular, he's just absolutely pitch perfect. His best performance as Bond for my money by a mile. There are moments of great humour, as well as moments where he's clearly pissed off and emotional and conveying it all with a great deal of British reserve, which feels completely right for the character at that time. He's obviously the icon of the series, and as Deservedly so, but for me personally, there are still two more actors that I love watching even more than Connery. 
Number two. You were expecting someone else? I've been very surprised over the years at how Brosnan's portrayal of Bond has ranked lower and lower on general polls and fan posts that I see. He, he was the Bond that I grew up with, the man who was in the part when I became a Bond fan, so he'll always have a special place in my heart for that. And back then in the 90s and the early 2000s, I remember he was being lauded as the best Bond other than Connery pretty regularly. I feel like this is a fairly consistent thing, though. The consensus at any one time always seems to be, well, obviously Connery's the best, and then it kind of defaults to whoever the current Bond is as second best, and then it tends to be the preceding Bond in the timeline before that second best is often the most criticised, I find. As a result, I feel like we're just in a phase of Brosnan bashing, and he'll get his renaissance approval midway through Craig's successor's tenure, just like Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore were more appreciated way after their times in the part had ended. But for me, Brosnan has always been a favourite, and I think in many ways he's the perfect amalgamation of so many of the strongest elements of the Bonds that came before him. Similar to Connery, I think he can do all the beats of action, humour, looking tough, schmoozing around a casino, he looks just as natural in combat gear as he does in a tux, he's got that same cool factor in spades. For the film where I love him the most and think that he's at his best, I'm actually going to go with Goldeneye. I know that there are other films that ask more of him as an actor, but in Goldeneye he just excels in every aspect for me. A common criticism I see of Brosnan is that he's a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, and unlike a lot of the other Bonds who occupy a particular space in their portrayals, be it, you know, funny, more serious, Dalton, weepy Craig, and so on, Brosnan's era is kind of defined by trying to hit all of the Bond beats every time, and I can understand why that would rub some people up the wrong way. Not me, though. And yes, I'm well aware that I'm very much influenced by the fond nostalgia I have of seeing his films when I was a kid, but so what? This is my list, and I love watching this man as Bond. He was born to play the part. He was the Bond I always wanted to be when I was a kid. He nails it for me, and I've even grown to love the trademark Brosnan pain face. And so, number one is... But James, I need you. So does England. And so, of course, that means my number one favourite Bond actor is Roger Moore, the first Bond I ever experienced. Moonraker was my first 007 film, and he's the actor that every time I just delight in seeing on screen. Along with Brosnan, I feel like there's a great consistency to his performances, barring a few dodgy moments in Golden Gun where they rather uncomfortably tried to make him into some kind of cold-hearted, woman-beating dolt. Otherwise, you know exactly what you're in for when you settle down for a Roger Moore Bond adventure. There's an effortless affair profitability to the man, and he just seems to be having a good time no matter what he's doing. He possesses in truckloads that perfect knowing quality that the best Bond actors possess. Moore's portrayal is often criticised for not being as believable as a top secret agent as some of his peers are, and obviously I can see that, but in a film where a man wants to poison everyone on Earth so that he can begin a new super race from his base of operations in outer space, believability is not at the top of my checklist for a good time, funnily enough. As I said up top, this list is totally subjective, totally biased, my feelings alone factor into this, and when it comes to just undiluted joy and entertainment, watching a man playing James Bond on screen for two hours, I get no greater enjoyment than seeing Roger Moore inhabit this part. He's so charming and fun in everything he does, but particularly as Bond, and he fits in so well with the style of film that they were making at the time, rollicking adventure yarns. However, all that being said, I think Moore's capability as a dramatic actor is criminally underrated. Uh, people People remember the eyebrow raises, the puns, the gags, all of which he excels at. His comedic timing and class of delivery is spot on consistently, but less remembered, unfortunately, are the moments of personal stinging. You know, like when Anya brings up the fate of his deceased wife, the quiet resolve as he pays respects at the grave of said wife, the cold seriousness when he interrogates General Olaf, the quiet moments of respect when allies are killed. Roger Moore was a Bond who didn't need his actor's ego satiated. He never felt a need to go big and dramatic for the sake of the art, and it's just this level of knowing in regard to the material he had to work with that endears him to me so much. As does his life outside of Bond, obviously his charity work for UNICEF is a legacy more important to the world than his time as Bond, but it's how much of a champion and ambassador to the franchise he was. Even after he left the role, so often there seems to be bitterness involved once an actor quits or is let go from the part. Moore just see always seemed to be so proud and happy of his contribution to the series, and always so humble too. I mean, he makes jokes at his own expense, and just always seems like a such a jovial and grateful personality. He knew he was incredibly fortunate to be in the position he 
was in life and enjoyed it to the full and it's impossible for me to disassociate this joy from his persona as Bond. And perhaps that lack of disassociation is why I'm going to cite Moonraker as being my favourite of his performances, much in that same vein of acting as Connery. The moments where he has to express fear and nerves, he does it in such a matter-of-fact and realistic feeling way without going all thespian about it. And pair that with just the pure joy in which he plays this character, swanning about these fantastic places and being just a constant charmer, he's just terrific. When I think of Roger Moore as Bond, I just think of fun times, enjoyment, entertainment, escapism, and isn't that what a good Bond should do? Like, just take the audience on a ride with them and guide them through an incredible, fantastical world and just relax and have a great time? Roger Moore does that for me every time, which is why he's my favourite Bond actor of them all. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good night. Dare I evoke that completely overused phrase that people always use when it comes to describing anything that they really like about James Bond? You know the one I'm talking about, don't you? Nobody does it... What's that? He's in there for sure, but it's locked. Quick, get the explosive toothpaste or blow the hinges. Oh god, it's the Timothy Dalton fans that have come to get me. Okay, uh, I have to end this video by saying a thank you, thank you, thank you, a massive, massive thank you to all of the people who support me on Patreon. It's only because I hit a target on there that I'm making these ranking videos, so thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. You folks are awesome, I really appreciate it. So please do stay tuned for the next two installments in this series on ranking the Bonds. There's an awful lot to talk about when it comes to ranking these guys, so... Please do stay tuned for those. If this is the first video on this channel that you're watching and you've enjoyed it, then please do go below and hit the subscribe button. Um, uh, if you want to stay up to date on other videos that I upload on this channel as well, then please do go below and hit the subscribe button. Also below is the comment section where you can let me know your thoughts on the James Bonds. And for these comments too, I want to give the very specific request of just having your completely unfiltered, completely biased, completely subjective opinions on who your favourite Bond is, who is just an absolute delight for you to see on screen every time. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Also below there are links to my Facebook page and my Twitter page if you want to follow me on those platforms. Please do head over there for more details on that. And until next time Bond fans, so long for now.